Uh, we're going to go into our slide deck just with our district updates at this point. Uh, as we stated earlier, schools are MCAS testing. This was uh, an MCAS kickoff rally over at the Partham School with uh, our friends from the theater department, who we'll talk a little bit more about later, doing a, a pep rally to get the kids excited and pumped up about taking their English MCAS, as again, English uh, um, ELA math and science MCAS in the elementary and middle schools are basically how the kids do on those are 60% of the school's metrics on how they're rated by, uh, by DESE. So we want to make sure the kids are giving their full effort and getting kids in the right frame of mind before they start testing. Dave, next slide, please. Uh, more exciting news regarding the Leahy School. The last piece of steel is officially in place over at the Leahy School. There's a, a picture of myself signing with Acting Commissioner Russell Johnson with the mayor and Mr. McDonald from uh, MSBA, as well as Senator Payano and Representative Francisco Paulino in the background, amongst many other folks who were there. We had a great morning. Um, slightly, slightly chilly, started raining a little bit, but then stopped. Um, also, ch checking in with all the highly skilled workers, I know Ms. Matias uh, and I had talked a little bit at the last meeting, I believe, about career in tech ed, and um, my 19-year-old Luke Hudson, um, my 19-year-old stepson, uh, was assigned over there briefly. He works for Griffith Electric, and he has been working there for three years now. He's been working for Griffith Electric since he was 16 and a half years old, uh, again, because he chose Whittier Tech. Um, and Chair Mariano, I said, you'd better be doing a good job with this electrical wiring so that our kids have a top-notch facility over there when we start. And I said, they're very, very personally important to many of us on the board. So he's doing his best over there. You know, he goes back and forth between the Leahy site. Sometimes he's up in Nashua, New Hampshire, wherever his, uh, wherever his uh, company assigns him. But just an, a great sense of pride on my part to see him over there working hard for the future uh, of the kids in Lawrence. So um, it was a great day over there. Uh, quick Acceleration Academy update, as we mentioned briefly before. Um, focus for this session is going to be in math and science. We have 1,359 students who are going to be attending. High School Science is going to be focusing on biology for grade 9 and mostly geometry for grade 10. Typical schedule for Acceleration Academy has academics as well as some enrichment activities. And uh, LPS's Instructional Vision for Acceleration Academy that was developed by Dr. Spash in her office several years ago to kind of refocus us on what acceleration is meant to be, um, states that we want our kids engaged throughout the day to accelerate learning, but we want them to have a sense of joy and urgency while they're here next week. So um, again, serious academics, but fun at the same time uh, for our kids who attend next week. Next slide, please, Dave. Our Office of Curriculum Instruction has been hard at work working on our summer reading list to make sure that our kids have suggestions on what to read over the summer. The list is going to be posted on the LPS website and is going to be shared with the public library in June. And we have lists available for all students who are going to be in first through eighth grade next year. You know, the district often purchases a lot of these titles for kids to take home, but the Lawrence Public Library also will have copies for students who just drop by to, to do some free reading or for students to check out. Um, additional things will be sample reading logs uh, for families to be able to track reading with their kids, sample four square reading activities, tracking the total number of books that kids read over the summer, and then some goal setting. Next slide, Dave. Um, you know, again, we, we want to stress accountability and also urgency, but we also want to have fun. Uh, Gilmet School also recently had a pep rally to get their students ready and prepared for MCAS. So students who had outstanding or perfect attendance were able to pie Ms. Cunningham, Ms. Skolan, or Ms. Anderson um, in the pep rally. And again, a, a lot of fun, a lot of laughter, um, a lot of excitement, celebrating kids who are doing well attendance-wise, and then also urging them to do their best on the MCAS. Uh, I think the day after we had our last board meeting um, celebrating the arts again, we had our district-wide music concert uh, right down the street in the pack. K-12 students from nine music programs uh, throughout LPS performed. Uh, having all the kids in the audience while their peers performed was great. They were cheering each other on. They were clapping along. It was really a terrific event. And it's a great opportunity, especially for our younger students, uh, to perform in a big venue for the first time in a packed house. <clears throat> their families were there, but also their, their peer uh, grade-level students from across the district were there to cheer them on as well. We had a great event uh, just, I think, last week or a week and a half ago at Lawrence High School. Um, the folks at Homeland Security Investigations and Lawrence High School partnered up uh, to put together a cadet program. Students had the opportunity to meet with HSI personnel and learn about different aspects of a career in law enforcement. 
And the, the folks at Homeland Security actually did trainings with students on, you know, how to preserve evidence in a chain of custody, how to actually go out in a, in a, in a Homeland Security vehicle and conduct surveillance, things like that. Um, and to celebrate their hard work and dedication, Homeland Security personnel, uh, the special agent in charge of Homeland Security for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as well as the U.S. Attorney and many, many other folks, a lot of our elected officials attended as well. Um, and we had a great celebration in uh, the upper cafeteria um, and a lot of pride on the sense of parents of the students who participated. You see my, my friend um, Santo Huertas there with his mom, Ellie, and Jaime. Uh, they're posing with the uh, special agent in charge of Homeland Security in Massachusetts. Just a, a, a nice small event, great recognition and a lot of pride. And uh, again, the folks from Homeland Security, uh, and I hope Roberto, who is here as well to give the high school update, can be able to uh, talk a little bit about it as well. Uh, I think the f folks at Homeland Security enjoyed it just as much as our kids, or maybe even more than, than our kids did, being able to work directly with some young folks who are motivated to learn more. So. All right, uh, challenge for the, for the city in general and uh, for folks within the district to, to come out and show out for Tarzan, which is going to be starting on April 26th. Our LHS theater group is going to put on their next performance, which we always say was the best ever, and then you go to the next performance and you say that's the best one that they've ever done. Um, recently, our superstars in the Lawrence Theater were recognized by the Lawrence City Council. They received citations for their efforts and posed for a, a photo at City Hall with our city councilors. We appreciate the recognition of our students by the folks on the city council. It was a great night as well. Spring sports are in action. At the high school level, we have uh, volleyball, baseball, softball, tennis, and outdoor track in action. And intramurals are going to begin on May 4th in outdoor track in volleyball for our middle school and elementary school students. I think uh, several months ago, you know, we, we had uh, the SAF presentation and several members were asking about, you know, how do, how do, you know we, we say that we're promoting student voice. What does that look like at different schools and different programs? So we just have some, uh, over the last several weeks, we've been going around with LPS Media taking pictures of student voice and action at our programs across the district. Um, many different programs, many different grade levels, many different ways for students to show their voice. So when, when I stopped by um, the School for Exceptional Studies last week, I was talking with the principal and also the folks who um, run, run their SES Pride News that they publish on their one-stop site for parents and students. Their news program is run by students and for students. They publicize and celebrate school events. They even do a weather forecast so kids can prepare for the weekend. And all again, all of their episodes can be found on the one-stop hub for students and families. Uh, we have a couple of snapshots there from the SES News and the weather forecast. And also, they did a nice video <clears throat> on their science fair pretty cool to take a look at where kids are actually doing the science experiments on video, um, measuring impacts of sound, weather-related projects, things like that. The Leonard Middle School for Student Voice, they have a, a group that's called the Think Tank, and they have 17 students who participate in the Think Tank. They commit to meeting weekly with each other and the school principal. They have collaborated on school issues with the Facilities Department and the Nutrition Services Department, and they have contributed ideas to the Leahy School Project, including room colors for the middle school section of the building. Next slide, Dave. Student voice through art. Uh, recently went over to the Weatherby School to check in with Stephanie, who was recently named an Artist of the Week. Her project included the use of pastels and watercolors. She will be attending Lawrence High School, the Abbott program, next year. And she let us know that she was able to exercise her student voice because the Weatherby allows their middle school students to select additional electives and what they're interested in. <clears throat> so if they're interested in doing an additional PE section of volleyball, they have the chance to opt into that. Uh, Stephanie herself opted into a, an addition, additional time in the art elective. And when we went over, you know, she does have, uh, her last name is a studio, and it's not, not such a common last name. So I say, hey, you know, is, is Crystal a studio related to you? She's like, yes. And she actually works at the Weatherby. So Crystal is Stephanie's cousin. Crystal graduated from Lawrence High School about five years ago, heavily involved in the arts. You might recognize her for being in the dance program. So we took a, a great picture with Stephanie Crystal and with Dr. Ramos over there at the Weatherby. The Partham Elementary Student Council, uh, some younger students, but they're also heavily involved in, um, in things that go on at the Partham School. So their student council members meet bi-weekly bi <coughs> with Ms. Calabresi, their principal. They help plan and organize school events such as open houses and pep rallies. 
And a couple of them even uh, volunteered at the mobile market, and I saw them at the mobile market prior to St. Patrick's Day passing out corned beef, potatoes, and onions with the other folks who were volunteering. And they told me that when I met with them this week that they focus what they do at the school on their pride values, which mean being prepared, acting with respect, leading with integrity, being determined, and making sure that they achieve excellence. Some older students, uh, we have the superintendent student council that I meet with on a monthly basis along with uh, assistant superintendent Acosta, <clears throat> Ms. Acevedo, who's the re-engagement manager at the high school, the supervisor of guidance, Ms. Brady, also Ms. Galini Sanchez, who's our executive director for diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And we meet monthly with them on high school issues and projects that they want to work on. Current, issue that, current issues that they are working on are a walkathon in the fall where they're going to use proceeds to donate to Lawrence General Hospital. And also they are uh, focusing on a wellness initiative for the high school as well. More student voice at the high school level. Student Government Day and the Governor's Youth Council. So Brenda and Hillary represented Lawrence High School at Student Government Day recently. Both of them were also selected by Governor Healy to serve on her Youth Advisory Council. So when you talk about student voice, Having access at uh, quarterly meetings to the governor and lieutenant governor, I don't know how you can have more student voice than that. Um, and the governor's youth advisory council will make recommendations to Governor Healy on unique issues that the youth of the Commonwealth are facing, um, including but not limited to civic engagement, education, and youth violence. So we're very proud that um, Carla and Brenda uh, and Hillary were able to not just part, uh, represent us at Student Government Day, but also represent us on uh, uh, Governor's Youth Advisory Council. And I think this might be the last um, item for student voice, but recently we visited the State House for early college day at the State House. Our students were able to speak with First Essex State Senator uh, Payano, as well as Second uh, Assistant Majority Leader and 17th Essex Representative Moran about their experiences in early college, <clears throat> what they like about it, uh, what they want to see more of for um, their younger brothers and sisters and cousins and peers who are, who are still coming up and will be able to experience early college in the future. Um, and again, having direct access to your state senator and, uh, and somebody like Rep Moran, who again is not just a representative, but is uh, the second assistant majority leader in the House. Again, I, I didn't, I'm not really sure how much more student voice you can have than that. So. You know, our young folks are out there, they're advocating, they're talking, they're not afraid, uh, they are respectful in their interactions. So those are just some of the many, many examples of student voice and uh, hopefully we'll be able to update on some more student voice activities moving forward. Any questions on anything from the district update before we move on? It's a great update. Thank you, Superintendent. Absolutely. You're welcome. Absolutely Thank you. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you.